starting a new series of videos dedicated to the history of radio technology. I plan to talk about the most revolutionary stages of radio development, about the most outstanding inventions, about outstanding engineers and inventors, about the most successful manufacturers of radio equipment and about the most legendary models of radio receivers that have left their mark in the history of radio. Where to start? Of course. From the story of the invention of the radio. An old Chinese wisdom says, you can look at how water flows forever, how the fire burns, without pretending to be original, I can add, and argue about who invented the radio, Popoff or Marconi, can Nikola Tesla, or why not Heinrich Hertz, all of them were involved in the most ingenious invention in the last 150 years. In addition, it must be said that for the first 20 years, radio was used only by the military and exclusively in the telegraphic mode. Of course, if you do not count individual single enthusiasts of radio amateurs, engineers and experimenters. But I will begin my story with an overview of the types of radio receivers and their quality, which were already known at the end of the First World War. What were the first radio receivers Popoff, Marconi, Hertz? It was difficult to even call them radio receivers. In fact, they are recorders of electromagnetic oscillations in a very wide range, including electromagnetic waves from the discharges of the nearest thunderstorm. There are no input resonance circuits, no sound signal demodulator detectors, not even loudspeakers or headphones. There is only the most primitive type of mechanical detector, a coherer and, attention, a bell. All they were capable of was receiving a single signal like Popoff's radio or a series of signals like Marconi's from primitive spark radio stations in telegraph mode and announcing their arrival with a bell from a landline instead of a loudspeaker. It was not for nothing that spark radio stations and radio receivers were called the wireless telegraph system. Of course, they could not transmit the announcer's voice or music in telephone mode. But this did not stop the lone genius engineers and inventors, who in the next 20 years invented and implemented all the currently known types of radio receivers and transmitters. And what were the transmitters of the beginning of the 20th century? Until the very beginning of the First World War, the vast majority of them were spark, and therefore could be used only in the telegraphic mode and almost exclusively by the government postal and communication services, the military and, in very rare cases, by lone radio enthusiasts. In 1903, the Danish engineer Valdemar Poulsen invented the arc transmitter, which was essentially a type of spark transmitter. But instead of a spark discharge, the arc transmitter already used a series of discharges that created an electric arc. It was one of the first types of transmitters that could generate continuous sine waves rather than decaying signals as in spark transmitters. However, almost at the same time, in 1902, the Canadian Reginald Fessenden patents an alternator machine transmitter. With the help of the latter, he managed to overtake Marconi in terms of transmission distance and was the first in the world to achieve stable two-way communication between the USA and Great Britain in 1906. But the most important was his main patent called, Apparatus for Transmitting Signals by Means of Electromagnetic Waves, which was essentially the world's first transmitter of sound signals and could transmit voice and music. Fessenden was able to realize his idea also in 1906 and organized several public sessions of music transmission over a distance of several tens of miles. Unfortunately, 
It did not arouse the interest of industrialists at that time, and the idea of broadcasting voice and music over long distances became relevant only after the end of the First World War. However, it was implemented not on machine generators of Fessenden, but on transmitters with electronic radio tubes. The detector receiver is the simplest type of radio receiver. It does not have amplifying elements, and therefore has one very important advantage over other types of receivers. It does not need a power source because it uses only radio signal energy. The second great advantage of the detector receiver over the Popoff and Marconi receivers is the possibility of receiving not only Morse code in the telegraph mode, but also amplitude modulated signals of sound frequency, music and voice. It is these three factors that explain their enormous popularity in the world in the first years after the First World War. Despite the fact that radio receivers of this type have been used by the military and radio amateurs since the beginning of the 20th century, the radio required an extremely large antenna. With the invention of electronic tubes and the invention by the American leader Forrest of the first electronic amplifier radio tube triode in 1906, other types of receivers began to appear, direct amplification, regenerative and, most importantly, superheterodyne. Direct gain receiver, although it is a bit of a stretch, Lee de Forest's Audion can already be considered the first receiver of direct amplification because, although very weakly, his receiver amplified the signal before decoding. But the author of the invention of the classic direct amplification receiver with additional HF cascades is unknown to historical science. It's simple. The idea of building direct amplification receivers with one or more high-frequency input and low-frequency output stages is already too obvious. As a result, the direct amplification receiver became much more sensitive than the detector radio receiver, it had a sufficient antenna of smaller sizes. But the main advantage was that it could already provide loudspeaker reception. Although this advantage was not fully appreciated until the beginning of the era of commercial radio broadcasting in the early 1920s, that is, radio broadcasting to the public. Regenerator, experimenting with increasing the rather low sensitivity and selectivity of direct amplification receivers, the future brilliant American engineer and inventor Edwin. While still in college, Armstrong created, built and patented in 1914 the first regenerative type receiver, which dramatically increased the sensitivity and selectivity of the radio. Two years later, in 1916, a receiver of the same type was patented by Lee de Forest. This led to a 12-year lawsuit that ended in the U.S. Supreme Court in favor of Lee de Forest. The regenerator allows you to get the most benefit from one radio lamp. Therefore, in the early years of the development of radio technology, when radio tubes and power sources were expensive, it was widely used not only in amateur, but also in professional receivers, successfully competing with the same Armstrong superheterodyne invented in 1918. Due to its simplicity and efficiency, the Regenerator was the most popular type of radio receiver in the 20s and the first half of the 30s almost all over the world.